from an era of going to opera and musical concerts to listen to music to an era of listening music in our home the invention of gramophones would be the first step for our modern entertainment it is also the most important invention that changed the music industry overnight and spread music to everyone around the world in this video we're going to explain how these gramophones can produce music without even electricity if we take a look at a gramophone it produces sound when we place a stylus needle on a rotating record disc the record disc contains music data and the gramophone converts these data into sound before we talk about how a gramophone produces sound let's learn a few things about how sounds are recorded into a record disc in other words vinyl record what we call sound results from the vibration of objects hitting our eardrums and making them vibrate in other words the vibrations we can hear are called sound imagine a pen going up and down with the sound waves if we put a paper underneath it will draw a line repeatedly in order to record the sequential motion throughout the time let's pull the paper strip with some constant speed and you will see the sound waves recording with time it is the same idea in recording the vinyl disc the vibrations from microphone are sent to the cutting lathe and move the diamond cutter side to side the diamond cutter etches these vibration onto a rotating lacquer disc lacquer disc is just an extra smooth aluminum disc coated with lacquer on top by moving the cutter head on the rotating disc the cutting paths will not cross each other and forming a spiral path leading towards the center the lacquer disc after the recording process is called the master disc but to mass produce these records, there are still many processes left. First, a master disc is sprayed with silver chloride and coated with silver to conduct electricity. After that, it is immersed into a liquid tank of dissolved nickel. When immersed, the nickel is fused to the silver surface by electrical charge. This process is called electroplating. When the nickel surface is removed from the original lacquer disc, we get the negative image of the grooves on the nickel disc. Negative image is just an opposite pattern of the grooves on the master disc. By using this nickel negative disc to stamp the grooves onto a heated vinyl, we get the vinyl record which has the same groove pattern as the original lacquer disc. One nickel disc or stamper can be used for about 1500 times before losing its quality. This is just an overly summarized process of record making. In reality, the processes are more complicated and each factory has its own production techniques. Since we now understand how sounds are recorded onto a disc, let's move on to how gramophones can produce back the sounds recorded in a vinyl record. We can separate the gramophone into three main sections. The spindle that the record sits on and rotates on, the stylus that moves on the record disc, and the horn assembly that amplifies the sound. These gramophones don't even need electricity and here is why. The record is rotated by the spindle. The spindle is driven by the spring motor inside the gramophone. The spring motor is powered by one or two torsional springs. The outer end of the spring is fixed at the motor housing and the center end is fitted at the gear shaft. The gear shaft is driven by the worm gear which has a mounting hole at the end. If you wind up the spring and release it, it will quickly goes back to its original position. In order to produce the rotation via the housing and not from the wind up gear, we need to make the worm gear one way only for winding up. For that a spring called non-return spring of the same size as worm gear is inserted on the shaft and the end is fitted at the motor frame. When we rotate the worm gear to wind up the spring, the non-return spring is in expending state, making it easy to rotate. But when the spring went to rotate back the shaft, non-return spring is in contracting state and so it tightens on the worm gear making it unable to rotate. By limiting the rotation on the worm gear makes the spring recoils on the spring housing. Even though the spring recoils with enough power, the duration is so short and the speed is so high for the vinyl record that needs longer duration with steady speed. To be able to rotate the record for many many turns, the spring main gears is connected to a much smaller gear. If the two gears have the same size, the driven gear will rotate the same revolution as the driver gear. But if the driver gear is six times larger than the driven gear, the driven gear will rotate six times for every revolution of the driver gear. Same principle is used in our spring motor. When the spring main gear is used to drive the much smaller gear which also drives smaller gear, we can get so many revolutions from a few turns of the spring winding. In the winding part, since the spring shaft gear is about three times larger than the worm gear, we must rotate three times in order to wind up the spring one turn. With that low gear ratio and the leverage on the hand crank make it possible for anyone to be able to wind up the gramophone easily. 
Even though we can get so many revolutions out of few turns from the spring, the rotation speed is still so high at the smaller gears. A normal vinyl record can play the songs at 70 revolutions per minute, or 130 revolutions per minute, depending on the recording rate. To control the output speed of the gears, we add a governor speed control. It is just a shaft with hanging weights, and it is connected to the spindle by a worm gear set, which will limit the spindle rotation speed. When the speed is getting high, the weights on the shaft move outwards, due to centrifugal force. The weights also pull the flange to one side. The flange is controlled by a small felt pad, connected to the speed control dial on top. When the speed is high, the weights move outwards and pull the flange towards the felt pad. The friction between flange and felt pad, slows down the rotation speed. When the rotation gets slower, the weights move inward, and push the flange back reducing the friction between the flange and the felt pad. Reducing the friction increases back the speed, which will expend the weights and pull the flange towards the felt pad. Since it is happening in a feedback loop, we can get the decent speed at the spindle. For producing sounds, when we place a stylus needle on the rotating record, the grooves on the disc move the needle back and forth, producing the same vibration that were used for cutting these grooves. But these vibrations are not big enough to produce any audible sound. For that, the motion of the needle is amplified by the longer lever, which is attached to the diaphragm. Therefore, the small vibrations of the stylus needle can produce the larger vibrations on the diaphragm, hence, producing the audible sound. This is further amplified by the horn assembly to make it loud enough for home entertainment. When the sound waves travel through the horn, the increasing area of the horn makes the sound waves resonate, and hence getting louder at the end. Depending on the type of gramophones, one or two records can be played with single winding. After that, you need to rewind the spring to listen again. Hand crank gramophones become less popular, when the electric motor ones were produced. At this point, we hope you understand how gramophone works, and how the sounds were recorded and maintained. In this era of digital and electronics with all its glory, it is so inspiring to know how we humans had started, and how far we have come. To see more explainer videos like this, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell to not miss any of our educational videos. You can also tell us what topic you want us to explain, in the comment section. If you want to support us, or sponsor us for making these videos, you can contact us at quasaranimationstudio at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and we'll get back to you with another interesting video.